Okay, let's get out of this house, please. Let's get out. I don't know why I feel like I'm gonna die around any one of these corners. Wait. Whoa. Oh, that's nasty. Yeah, I need to get out of here. Alright, let's go, let's go. Let's get me out of this house, please. Just get me out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Holy crap, man. Get me out. Just three years ago, it was fair to say that the horror genre was in disarray. Aside from a few admittedly strong indie titles, the genre was slowly dying. Series such as Fear and Dead Space had long since crumbled to dust, and Resident Evil's underwhelming fifth and sixth installments done nothing to revitalise the genre. Then out of nowhere came the saviour, PT, a demo which many would come to learn is the next instalment in the Silent Hill series. Unfortunately, the game was cancelled, but it went on to inspire many games just like it. Resident Evil 7 Biohazard is a byproduct of that inspiration. A game that harkened back to its horror roots, acted as a soft reboot for this series and provided some of the most gruesome, intense and genuinely terrifying scenes that I have witnessed within the modern gaming era. So with that in mind, we now finally have the follow up to this title in the form of Resident Evil Village. This game acts as a direct continuation to the events of Resident Evil 7, aims to link the Resident Evil lore of the past to Ethan Winter's storyline and also aims to offer a much more sci-fi oriented and combat heavy approach. However, does this new approach work in practice, or is this another misstep for this hit and miss franchise? Let's begin with the overall world of Village. Unlike his predecessor, this tile allows the player to explore much more open and expansive environments. No longer will the player be confined to narrow PT style halls. Instead, you will be thrust into a world of cartoonishly twisted evil that clearly bases itself around Transylvania and makes use of just about every horror cliche in the book, whether that be direwolves, vampires or grotesque hags to name but a few. The main gripe that I have with this tile is undoubtedly the story. The luxury that its predecessor had was that it could go anywhere with the story and do whatever they wanted, and that freedom led to a fantastic finalised product. However, in this instance fans are expected to link Resident Evil lore into a modern Ethan Winter story, and I am sad to say that it all feels a little forced, stilted and almost cartoonish at times. For those yet to play RE7, the game does offer a quick recap of events. To keep this brief and spoiler free, Village takes place years after the tragic events of Biohazard. Ethan Winters, his wife Mia and his baby daughter are now living in peace doing their utmost best to put their past behind them. However, Chris Redfield, the legendary hero from previous Resident Evil games, suddenly disrupts their life, throwing a devastated Ethan into a new and twisted nightmare in search of answers. The main reason why RE5 and RE6 didn't blow fans away was largely due to the almost comedic sci-fi element each had. Well, in Village this problem raised its head once again, however I will admit on a much lesser scale. The bosses and characters within this tile hail from a much more supernatural background than the hillbilly tribe from RE7, and for that reason they come across as rather animated and at times silly. This isn't to say that the story isn't compelling, it truly is, however there certainly is an ebb and flow to proceedings but not necessarily at the right times. Several set pieces are spectacular, a series of moments provide both jump scares and psychologically unsettling feelings, and for the most part the narrative is well written. I just can't help but feel that there could have been a much more cohesive story told here, as it feels like a sum of many parts rather than a tightly woven plot. This is sadly most apparent through the ending of this title. The level design team behind Village has to be commended, as there is an incredible amount of variation and diversity to level design here. On your adventure you will visit castles, houses, reservoirs and factories, each one offering up its own unique identity. I am genuinely blown away by the attention to detail in each setting. In a recent interview, the RE8 producer suggested that the game had been changed after player response from RE7, indicating that players didn't like how frightening the game was. So it seems the devs listened and the outcome has been a move to a much more combat and action heavy core gameplay. No longer does Ethan feel weak and vulnerable, instead you feel like a seasoned veteran battling against the odds. However, whilst this sounds good, I don't really know how to feel about it. The gameplay as a result is reminiscent of Resident Evil 4, only from an FPS perspective. 
which is by no means a bad thing but it does take the series in another direction after establishing itself as a horror A-lister again. To its credit, the combat feels tight and accessible, much more so than the shaky and uncomfortable combat in RE7. Plus, the enemy variation is another great addition that really helps keep the combat fresh throughout. Then, in contrast, the game does employ moments where stealth and caution are required, and these offer a different kind of intense gameplay that is much appreciated. House Benavio is a standout and offers some of the most frightening moments in gaming history. However, I can't help but wish that there was a better balance between the two as the game does run the risk of becoming an all-out FPS shooter at times, which is not what Resident Evil as a series has ever tried to be. There were times where I was genuinely making comparisons to the Call of Duty series like Modern Warfare. On the topic of combat, aim assist is definitely flawed. By that I mean it's been implemented in a way that my reticule just switches from enemy to enemy without me having to even move my thumbstick. It's odd and reminded me of games like Time Crisis. While the enemies are certainly more varied, I cannot make the argument that the enemy AI is up to the expected standard. Much like in RE7, enemies simply walk aimlessly towards you, closing the gap until they can land the attack animation. So fighting them boils down to filling them full of shrapnel before they are right on top of you. Now I'm no expert but I thought that due to the advancement in enemy AI seen in games such as Alien Isolation in 2014, that we could expect a more intelligent enemy than what we were given. I might have forgiven this aspect if the boss battles were in any way deeper and challenging but sadly that wasn't the case, so this certainly does make the combat a chore especially coming towards the end of the game. However, one addition that does soften the blow is the newly reformed crafting system that now allows you to craft a much more diverse list of weapons and items. Item conversation and menuing which was important in the previous tile now switches to a focus on resource management. Resources are in decent supply but players will often be at a crossroads where they must choose between weapons for ranged combat over close quarters, or healing or offensive items. It's a carefully crafted system that works rather well in practice. Another aspect of the game that requires praise is the puzzle design. Many of them are rather well constructed and require some out of the box thinking, however some puzzles are flawed due to the restrictive camera angle. The last thing to note is the load times, they're incredibly fast ranging anywhere from 1 to 6 seconds from menu to game. In terms of the actual visual presentation as well as the audio display, the game has to be commended. Yes, the tile does run through the same engine as RE7 and that is apparent, however the graphics are much more refined and reflect the jump to new, more capable hardware. A pristine 4K 60fps image is further enhanced with the stunning implementation of ray tracing, with light bouncing and spilling correctly off objects giving every environment a hyper realistic look to it. It adds to the immersion in a major way, however it is the sheer scale of this project that helps bridge the gap to make this a next gen experience. The stunning vistas of Castle Demetrea right down to the bleak gritty caverns where you shield yourself from the bitter cold are all presented with the utmost care and attention, so for aesthetics and flair I have to give the game its dues. Audio is key to driving home terror, fortunately village is no slouch in this area. Walking through the castle's dungeons you'll hear the echoes of a drip far in front of you and a screeching creature ahead. As you travel the village at night, you'll hear footsteps in front of you and behind you, almost as if you're being followed. Some sequences rely on the sheer fear of the unknown and its ambience, with the player aiming to solve puzzles unarmed in a darkened house with the plethora of unidentifiable sounds resonating around you. The fear lies in what the audio suggests you might see rather than what's in front of you and that's exactly what I was hoping for. It should be noted that I did experience a couple of bugs with audio missing, mainly during key cutscenes which was quite frustrating as it meant that I had to re-watch them on YouTube. Overall, Resident Evil Village offers a much more open adventure than its predecessor and an experience that is much more action heavy and combat oriented, so in terms of achieving what it set out to do, I suppose it has done just that. However, as a result the game feels far too similar to a modern FPS point and shoot tile, rather than the intelligent and horrifying gameplay that we as fans have come to expect from the series. Really was I asked to engage on a cerebral level with this game, but instead I was asked to mindlessly kill mutants and beasts which grew in volume as the game progressed. The game shines brightest when the player is allowed to freely explore the village, collect items, upgrade equipment and take in the truly grand world that Capcom has created. However, the game suffers from its need to wedge in fanfare with lacklustre callbacks to old lore, or wedged in exposition such as Ethan's military training to justify his newfound combat ability. In short, the game is still a triumph and well worth your time, however it is a departure from the new direction that RE7 had allowed the series to go in, a direction I much prefer. Hey guys, Saiyan Prince here and I hope you enjoyed that review. 
Becoming a full-time content creator is my dream and I'm so close to making that my reality. So if you're watching this video then do me a huge favour and hit that like button down below, comment your thoughts and of course subscribe. It would mean the world to me and I'll catch you all on the next video.